Hello and welcome to the second video on earnings per share. Watching this video will help prepare you for class. It's important that you view this before class so that we can learn more together in class. This video will walk you through how to compute basic and diluted EPS. After viewing this video, you should be able to compute basic and diluted EPS. Computing diluted EPS includes assuming common stock equivalents are converted into common stock. We will go through a complete example and compute basic and diluted earnings per share. This company has convertible bonds, convertible preferred stock, and warrants. Please pause the video and read through the example. We don't need to write it down because we will show the pieces of information we work with as we go through the video. The first thing that must be done in computing the weighted average. Start with the headings. You will need the date the number of shares changed, total number of outstanding shares, the number of months the shares were outstanding, and a column for splits or stock dividends. Crystal began the year with 1 million shares. They had 1 million shares until April 1st when they issued 120,000 shares. The next transaction occurred on August 1st when 50,000 more shares were issued, bringing the total outstanding shares to 1,170,000. They had 1,170,000 until the company issued a two-for-one stock split on 930. This doubled the number of shares. All stock splits and stock dividends must be retroactive to the beginning of the year. You must multiply all prior lines by two to be consistent. Write the number of months the shares were outstanding divided by 12 on each line and then do the math. Add up the weighted average shares for each period to get the total weighted average of 2,221,667. Do a quick reasonableness check. The average should be between the highest of 2,340,000 and the lowest of 1 million times 2, or 2 million. This company has preferred stock, so we must compute the preferred dividend. The preferred stock is cumulative and the dividend is always subtracted for cumulative stock even if the board does not declare the dividend because the board can declare the cumulative dividend in the future. To compute the dividend, take the number of shares times the par to get total par. Total par times the annual rate is the annual dividend. The preferred dividend is subtracted from net income. Divide the weighted average number of outstanding common shares to get basic earnings per share. This is the amount of earnings that can be attributed to one share of common stock given the current number of weighted average shares outstanding. We will now compute diluted earnings per share, the amount that EPS would be if all of the common stock equivalents were converted into common shares. We will pretend that bonds become common stock preferred stock becomes common stock, and warrants are exercised to purchase common stock. We will follow the rules under the if converted method and the treasury stock method learned in the previous video. First, let's pretend the preferred stock was converted into common stock. Each preferred share can be converted into 0.4 shares of common stock. Multiply the total preferred shares by 0.4 to get the total number of common shares that will be issued. The company can convert the preferred stock into 8,000 shares of common stock. Pretend the conversion is made at the beginning of the year and the 8,000 shares will be added to the weighted average outstanding shares. If the company did not have preferred stock at the beginning of the year, then no prefer preferred dividend would be paid during the year. A preferred dividend will not be subtracted from net income. Next, let's pretend the convertible bonds are converted into common shares. The bonds are convertible into 2.5 shares for each $200 in bonds. Divide the total amount of the bonds by 200 to get the number of bonds that will be converted into 2.5 shares. The company can exchange the bonds for a total of 6,250 shares of common stock. If the bonds are converted to stock, the company will not have this debt and will not have to pay the interest on the debt. Total interest expense is 40000 This expense reduced income. 
Net income is after tax, and interest must be converted to an after tax number also. Multiply by 1 minus the tax rate to get to the total after taxed interest that would not have been paid. EPS is adjusted for the interest not paid and the additional common shares issued. The last stock equivalent we will convert is warrants. Warrants work just like options and follow the treasury stock method. Pretend the warrant is exercised and stock is sold for the exercise price of $15. The company will receive $600,000 from the exercise. Under the treasury stock method, it is assumed the company uses this cash to purchase treasury shares, which reduce the shares outstanding at the average fair market price of $20. Pretend the company purchased 30,000 shares. The number of shares issued less the number of shares purchased is the net change to outstanding shares. EPS is adjusted for the net shares issued. To compute diluted earnings per share, first write the basic calculation. We will then adjust the basic calculation for all the pretend conversions into additional common shares we just discussed. Diluted earnings per share is $0.24. Cents. This is higher than basic EPS of $0.21. Cents. A higher diluted per share is anti-dilutive and is not allowed under GAAP. The convertibles that increased the diluted earnings per share must be removed from diluted EPS. Compute each convertible separately and determine the individual impact to earnings per share. A convertible that has an earnings per share higher than the basic earnings per share of $0.21 cents will increase the average diluted EPS. Remove the convertible with the highest EPS from the calculation. This will be the pretend bond conversion. After removing the pretend bond conversion, diluted EPS is still higher than basic of $0.21. Cents. Remove the impact from the high, next highest convertible, the preferred stock. Assume the preferred stock is not converted and the dividend is still paid. Now, diluted only has the impact of pretending to exercise the warrants. Diluted earnings per share is equal to basic earnings per share and is not dilutive. The company will report basic and diluted EPS at $0.21 cents per share. After viewing this video, you should be able to compute basic earnings per share and diluted earnings per share. To compute diluted earnings per share, you need to be able to assume conversion of preferred stock, convertible bonds, and options or warrants. You should also be able to identify anti-dilutive EPS and remove the securities to make it dilutive. This concludes our discussion on earnings per share. Please fill in the blanks on the EPS pages in your course pack and work through the practice as you learn problems and the easy test on studymyaccounting.com. Thank you for taking the time to be prepared for class. It is very much appreciated.